Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DCL Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Dreams and Limited Travel Agent Teresa Eccles. Hello. Joining us via Skype, Dreams and Limited Travel Agent Ms. Elaine Edwards. Hi, friends. And back in the production nook, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Oh, hi, hi. And just a reminder, this show, along with all the content we produce, brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. And I am one of the owners of Dreams, just for full disclosure. And if you like our content, show your support, book your next Disney vacation with DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. Um, all right, so we want to talk about some of the things that are going on in the news about DCL. First of all, they dropped a policy change the day before we're recording this that has a lot of people confused, has me confused. So, Elaine, explain this to us. Explain these policy changes. Sure. So um, the two policies that changed yesterday, May 11, 2022, um, they are not new policies. They were already in place, but they extended both of them and they extended them to different dates. And there are some other factors at play that have all of our agents confused, um, as well as all of our clients. Uh, so the first one is the flexible final payment date. Um, and that means that if you are selling through the end of 2022, that your final payment is not due until 60 days out. You can also cancel up to 60 days out. Um, with no penalties unless you're booked concierge, regular penalties apply. If you're booked in a VGT, those penalties apply. If you've added insurance, that kind of thing. Um, But in general, you can cancel with no penalties. However, the thing to keep in mind is that you cannot book any excursions or cruise activities until you are paid in full. So if you are a platinum guest and your booking date Uh, your cruise activity booking date is 120 days out, you're going to want to make sure you are paid in full so that you can book those activities that you are wanting to get for your cruise as soon as you can. And you can still, again, cancel up to 60 days out, but have to be paid in full in order to book. The other one that they changed is called the um, cruise date flexibility policy. This one or option, this one was in effect through the end of May. It's now been extended. So if you are booked on a cruise June 1 through September 30 of 2022, up until 15 days in advance, you can change your sell date with no penalty. However, those funds are locked into place. Um, you can't cancel for a refund, even if you change your date, but you can move the date of your cruise. You can move it up until the end of September, 2023. So you essentially have a, at least a year of moving your cruise out. The things to keep in mind, which is what confused all of us is what happens if you are booked with future cruise credit, or if you have a placeholder Um, that the date was extended for you. We had a lot of people that had booked placeholders before the stop sale happened and we were able to get them extended. Those still end at the end of September, 2022. Those placeholders are not extended any further. In the same vein, if you have 125% future cruise credit from a canceled cruise, It is not extended. Those funds can only be used through the end of September 2022. If you have a canceled wish cruise and you have future cruise credit from that or a wish cruise discount, nothing has changed. Those can still be used through the end of 2023. So I know it is very confusing and even there's even more levels depending upon your specific cruise. There is no blanket statements we can make about any of this because there are so many levels of intricacies going on right now with cruises that have been moved 
five times and they've got credits and discounts and all of these things going on. So you really, really, really have to ask, how does this apply to my specific cruise and your dreams and limited travel agent can help you unravel that. If you have an agent and you're working with us, do not call Disney Cruise Line. You will sit on hold for five hours, send your agent an email, and they can tell you how this relates to your cruise and what your options are. And that's no exaggeration when you talk about sitting on hold for hours with Disney Cruise Line right now. And this is one of the best reasons to have a travel agent because that's their job. Their job is to sit on hold. Their job is to get through to DCL and handle this stuff. And COVID has been the best advertisement for a travel agent I could possibly think of. Yeah, um, I can't tell you how many clients, new clients I've gotten because they're just frustrated, they're confused, and they just want someone else to take care of it. Yeah, just want to go on a cruise. Do. I just want I just want to go on a cruise. Just put me on a cruise. All right, L- Elaine, let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about um, the 2023 itineraries that dropped recently. Yeah, so um, we saw a lot of what we were expecting to happen. Summer is our biggest um, cruise itineraries, cruise drops of the year. We have three releases a year. Summer is always the biggest one because that's when they go to Alaska, they go to Europe, we do the transatlantics, all the ships are kind of moving around doing different things. And what we thought would happen all happened. The biggest surprise for me that I did not see happening is they are sending the dream to Europe. Yeah, that was a huge surprise. I didn't think that was going to happen. And there's pluses and minuses to that. The cool thing is, is a lot of those European cruises are the ones that sell out for us um, when we're calling in that they certain categories fill up super fast. The cruises themselves, a lot of them sell out. The thing about the dream is you're talking about a ship that's twice as big. So there's more room categories. There's more rooms in general. They can fit more people. So it's a lot more opportunity to be able to take that European cruise and have access to them. So it's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, I was definitely very excited uh, and surprised that the dream was going to, uh, to Europe. And how have your clients felt about it? Um, so I think a, a lot of them are excited. My only mixed emotion about that is – A lot of people have been on the dream just because that's the one that ran out of Port Canaveral for years and years and years and years doing those three and four nights. And a lot of our clients that are booking European cruises are clients that this is not their first cruise. Um, They have sailed on Disney before. And those three and four night Bahamians on the dreams, that is obviously the most cruise that people go on. Like, a lot of people that's their first cruise or they've been on it several times and they want to experience a different ship. And they thought they were going to get that going to Europe because they thought they were going to be on the magic. And so I know for me, it would be slightly disappointing because it's not a different ship to be on. Um, But again, you're going to Europe and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. I've got several clients who have only ever cruised the dream. They're in Florida they always take that three night weekend. It's always been the dream. And now I got a text from one the other day and he's like, okay, so the dream's leaving. Does this mean I have to go to Europe? I said, I guess it does. You're going to, if you want to be on the, you want to be on the dream, right. I can and help that, you with that. There's and they, you know, it just, wrong. yes, there's nothing wrong with the dream. I love the dream. Been yeah. on it several times. I love it. It's just, if you were thinking in your mind, you were going to experience a different ship, then we'll have to look at something else for you. See, I feel like it would be nice for the transatlantic crossings, at least, being on the Dream versus the small ships. Granted, I've never done them, but I feel like with the Dream, you know, having it be just slightly bigger it might make it feel like a little bit more to move around. But once you're in Europe, I mean, it, it also seems weird because the Dream, to me, is is kind of it's a destination ship. But when you're going to Europe, you're going to the destination. So you start to have a conflict of interest in my head but 
My head also doesn't work like it other people. It also people's. allows all of our European guests that that is their like home cruise is when the magic is over in Europe and maybe they have never sailed out of the United States. This is their now the dream is their home ship, so it gives them something different to experience. Yeah, That's true. true. It's all good. Yeah, and I love the dream. I do too. I love the dream. I've been on the dream so much the last six months, seven months. I feel like I live there. Um, but yeah, that that was uh, that was surprising. We all wondered what was going to happen with the dream, and mm-hmm. now we know. Now we know with the wish taking its place in uh, Port Canaveral, doing the three and four night sailings, just going to Europe. So um, I think that's pretty much it, right? So that's pretty much what's going on. So, all right, that's going to do it for this week's episode, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with another edition of the DCL show. Have a great week.